a lot of other stuff. I don't know about you, but I'm seeing that more and more. He says, so Jesus left there, went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples, and when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in their synagogues, and many who heard him were amazed. Well, that's, he's a teacher, Doc. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given to him? And what are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Now, I love this. Here's Jesus he walks into the synagogue. He begins to teach the people, and they're amazed. I mean, the, the revelatory information that's coming out of the ministry of Jesus is amazing, people. And then they begin to ask the question, what is this? Where does he get all of these miracles from? Because they acknowledge him that he's a miracle working man. But in verse 3, it says, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town among his relatives and in his own house. Better get that. Jesus, wait, wait, wait. They know that he's a miracle working God. They already know. They're sitting under the ministry, the teaching ministry of Jesus, and they are amazed at the words that are coming out of his mouth, the grace and the power that's coming from this man. They already know, who is this man? We know his sisters. We know his brother. We know his family. We even know he's a carpenter. And they become, they were offended because he was doing things that they could not do. And they begin to dial him down. And when they dialed him down, notice what happened. Verse 5, he says, and he could not do any miracles. Why? Because the God you see is the God you're going to get. Could not do, could not do. Here is the man that they knew was performing miracles, couldn't do none among them because they dialed him down. And then he went on to say, except he laid his hands on a few sick people and he healed them. You better get that. <laughs> a few got what was available to the many. Healing was available to the many, but they couldn't get it because the God you see is the God you get. And Satan is always trying to work on your theology, the study of God, so that he can prevent you by using misinformation or being uninformed, rob you of what God is caring for you. You better hear me now. <clears throat> okay, that's what the Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 6. He says, for without faith, without trust, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe what? That he is. What do you believe about him? Why? Because the God you get is the God you see. So the God you see is the God you get. So you can, you can see he's working on that, that you be misinformed and uninformed of who he is. We got people out here that recognize Jesus as only a prophet. Then that means he can only bring the prophetic to you. He can't bring, bring miracles and signs and wonders because you don't see him that way. And so Satan is always working on how we see him. Now say this, God is a finisher. God is a finisher. Now put it, say it again, God is a finisher. God is a finisher. Say it one more time, God, God. is a finisher. Yes. The apostle Paul wrote the Philippian church in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 in the New King James Version. He says, being confident of this very thing. I love that. Confident that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Say God is a finisher. Paul said, I'm confident of this very thing. That God who begun something in me will complete it. I said he will complete it. Why? Because God 
is a finisher. In the NLT, it says it this way. God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished. You, you're not hearing me there because you, you're missing it. There are things in your life that you started and you stopped. There are things that started in your life, never got finished. And God is trying to tell you, I am a finisher. Are you hearing me? That if I start something, I'm going to finish it. So it doesn't matter what it looks like in the natural. It may look impossible. It may not never look like it's going to happen. But I want you to know if you get your theology right, the God you see is the God you're going to get. You're going to get a finisher. You're going to get God that's going to bring an end to what he said he's going to do. God is a finisher. God. Are, are you hearing me? Finishing isn't just something that God does. Finishing is, is who he is. God is a finisher. I love Revelations chapter 1 verse 8. He says in Revelation in the New King James Version, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Ooh, glory. I am the beginning and the end. He says, saith the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. No, no, you, you never. Do, are you hearing me? I am the Alpha. He says in Revelation 22, verse 13, and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. What is he saying? I will start it, and I'm going to finish it. Shh. See, if you get that, you can apply that to your personal life. You can apply it to your relational lives. Listen, I don't care what's going on in your finances. You can apply it to your money. You can apply it to your mental health, your, your, your spiritual health. It will work that God is trying to tell the church who he is. This is what I want to be to you so that you know what you can be in every situation. You can be a finisher because God is a finisher. You can finish your marriage. You can finish with your children. You can finish with your health. You can finish because God is a finisher. You don't have to settle. No more settling. I don't have to settle anymore because God is a finisher. You run through a rough path in your relationship and then you start thinking about, I, I want out, I want to quit. No, God's a finisher. Because when, see, the God you see is the God you're going to get. If you know him as a finisher, you know that he that begun a good work, he's going to finish it. Say, he will finish it in me. Are you hearing me? First Timothy chapter 1, verses 12. I love the apostle Paul, and how he keeps trying to give us the correct theology. He says, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord. He's thankful. We ought to be thankful who has enabled me because he counted me faithful. Do you know that God counted you faithful? It wasn't anything you did. God counted you faithful. Tell somebody, I've been counted faithful. Say it again. I've been counted faithful in my personal life. I've been counted faithful in my relational life. I've been counted faithful in my mental and emotional life. I've been counted faithful in my finances. I've been counted faithful in my spiritual life. Somebody shout, I've been counted faithful by God. Not because of anything I've done, but God counted me faithful. Woo, come on, why? Because God is a finisher. And the God you see is the God you're going to get. He's going to finish your finance, finish your health, finish everything that has everything to do to, with you if you count him as a God who's a finisher. So Paul said, he counted me faithful. And because he did that, watch this, putting me in the ministry. God doesn't put you in the stuff because you deserve it. God don't put you in the stuff because you've earned it. It's not based on your effort, but it's because God has counted you faithful he put you in a place where it is already finished i already know the outcome before i get started 
I'm always going to win. I'm always going to be on the top. Why? Because he put me in that place. Are you hearing me? I love what 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says. Paul says, lest Satan should take advantage of us. This is the New King James Version. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Did you see that? Paul says, my ignorance is the place that Satan will take advantage of. I need you to, this is why, you know, getting your theology correct is so important. Because Satan takes advantage of people whose theology is incorrect. Do you realize that truth with a little lie is still a lie? When you mix truth with a false, it's still going to come out the same. When you're misinformed, Satan takes advantage of you. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> so when God begins to address our ignorance, whether it's personal, whether it's ignorance in relationships, do you know we need to have relational intelligence? We, ju we just think that we ain't got to be smart about relationship. We don't think that we've got to dig into the word and discover how to be relationally intelligent. We just think because, man, you know, I'm, I, 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 I know how to handle a relationship. I know how to have and do well that you do not. You're ignorant. I'm ignorant. So we need relational intelligence. And so, <clears throat> so when God addresses the ignorance, he's removing Satan's advantage. You, you better hear me now. When God starts to deal with you about your ignorance, what is he doing? He's removing Satan's advantage. Woo. Glory. 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 I don't know about you. I just wanted to run on that one. We put Satan at a disadvantage. When we're no longer ignorant, we put him at a disadvantage. Come on, somebody need to put him at a disadvantage where your health is concerned. Put him at a disadvantage where your mind is concerned. You need to put him at a disadvantage where your money is concerned. Satan need to be put in a place of disadvantage. Somebody listening to me. I'm going to take my own shoe and hit me. Oh, that. Woo. Glory. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Satan doesn't want us to know God as a finisher. Some of our anxiety is about stuff in our lives because we started something and didn't finish it. So it produces a level of anxiety in your life and mind. But you need to know that God is a God who finishes. Now, think about it this way. If God is a finisher and you and I are made in the likeness and in the image of God, that means that you are what? That means you are what? I mean, say it again. You're what? Say it like you mean it. How in the world can you be made in his image and in his likeness and you can't finish stuff? So why you are you discouraged because stuff ain't working? Just remind yourself, I'm a finisher because I'm made like God. It may not be what I like right now, but guess what? I'm going to finish what I start. Whoop, glory. Shout out, I'm a finisher. Now, I need you to get that. <clears throat> so when you say stuff like, man, I, 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 can't, I can't keep doing this. I, I can't put up with this anymore. I, I just, I'm, I'm, like, I'm tired of this, and, and I can't, I can't. You know what? You're right. You can't. And that's when the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. <laughs> Did you even get that? 
there, there are times when you and I have said out of your mouth, I, I ain't doing this no more. I'm, I'm done. I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it no more. Preacher, I'm done. I'm done. You're right. You're right. You can't. But greater. Glory. Is he in you than he that is in the world? Oh, glory. And the greater one is what? He's a finisher. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I'm going to finish what I start. Now, can I encourage you for a minute? Go with me to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Man, I am feeling like I want to run. Listen, <clears throat> Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. He says, and let us not be weary, King James Version, in what well doing. For in due season we shall reap, here's the key, if we faint not. Now, we always know that. You're going to reap if you don't faint. I said you're going to reap if you don't faint. I, I love what the new King James says. He said, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Tell your neighbor, don't lose heart. The NIV says it this way, let us not be weary in doing good for at the proper time. Tell somebody, there's a proper time. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Look at your neighbor and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Now, Satan is counting on you and I giving up. Satan is counting on you and I fainting. Satan is counting on that. But Jesus is counting on you to not give up. Look at your name. Say, Jesus is counting on you and I to not give up. Shout, I will not give up. I'm not going to give up on my health. I'm not going to give up on my wealth. I'm not going to give up on my life. I'm not going to give up on my children. I'm not going to give up on my friends. I'm not going to give up on, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going to give up. Why? Because God is counting on me not to give up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Luke chapter 22 verses 31. Jesus is counting on you. Jesus says to Simon, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, why? That your faith fail not. What's faith? Your trust in God. I know you might be going through some things. In your school, you might be going through some things in your home. You may be going through some things in your body. You may be going through some things in a relationship. But God says, I have prayed for you. The finisher has prayed for you. Why? That your faith, your trust in God, your hope in God, your expectation that comes from God will not fail. Right in the middle of just looking like I want to quit. Peter, Simon, Satan desires to sift you. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail if not. And watch this. And when you are converted, didn't even get, you missed it. See, you're going through now. You want to quit. You want out. I'm tired of this. I don't want to deal with it anymore. But God says, no, no, I prayed for you. When you are converted from wanting to quit and cave in and, and give up, when you are changed, he said, now go and do what? Strengthen the brother. Because your brothers want to quit as well. You want to quit. I know you want to quit. 
But when I convert you, when I change you, when you come into the revelation that I am a God who finishes. And, and so now when you realize what I want to be to you, now go be that to the people. Somebody shout, it's finished. Satan is counting on you not finishing. There you go. Who said that? Thank you. It's not happening. That's, how I, that's what God is saying. It ain't happening. Not on my watch. Now, here's the, the problem that you and I have got to deal with is our understanding for when we are finished, hear me now, and God's perspective on when we finished is not the same. Here's, here's it. Our understanding of when we finish is different from God's perspective of when we finish. Do you understand? Sometimes you, you say stuff like, I'm done. And God says, no, you're not. And then you say, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in this game. And God says, no, you're not. So can you see your perspective of when you finish is not the same as God's perspective. When you are finished, he said, no, you're not. I, I know that. I know that because I've done things that, 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 that I was doing and, then, and I kept wanting to do it. And God said, no, you're finished. I said, no, I'm not finished. I want to keep doing it, God. I want to keep doing it. And then when I'm finished, I'm not dealing with it anymore. I'm done with this crap. I'm over with it. I ain't got nothing to do with it. And when I'm finished with all that rant, he says, no, you're not. Because I'm not finished. Are you hearing me? My perspective of what it means to be finished is not his perspective of what it means to be finished. Are you hearing me? So managing this tension between these two realities when I, I think it's finished and he says it's not, and when it's finished and he says it isn't. How do we manage those tensions? Well, come on, let's, let's put that in a biblical context. Let's go to Luke chapter 5, and I'm, I'm coming to the end. I'm riding the, the pony down there. See, we, 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 we as believers got to understand the tension between these two realities when I say it's finished and he says it's not. And when I say I'm not finished and he says you are. How do we handle that? Because I don't know about you. You can't walk in this world without coming to that conclusion. We've all made conclusions that wasn't God's conclusion. And so here's the story. And I love this story. I don't know if I want to read the whole story and then teach it. But in Luke chapter 5, verse 1, it says, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowded around him and listening to the word of God. Listen to me. What were they doing? Listening to the word. We have to hear the word more than what we hear. I'm, I'm not saying we need to go to church more. I'm not saying go to church more. Because church can't feed you enough. <clears throat> but we, we, we've got, because the only way that you can be defeated is through the area of your ignorance and minds. And so here they are. He's, he's, he's teaching the word. I love Jesus. <clears throat> and, and, and said in verse 2, and he, he saw at the water's edge two boats. I'm reading this out of NIV left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Now, I don't know, should I read the whole story and come back? But let's go. So why were they washing their nets? That's it. They were washing their nets because they were done. They we're finished. My question then is, why do they think they're done? Because that's the same question that you and I come to. When you make a decision, I'm done with this, I don't want, why do you think you're done? 
I'm going to give you some reasons why they believed that they were done, why they believed that they were finished. This is a powerful word. Do, do you understand? I thought about, I was, I forget. This, 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 is, this needs to be understood because all of us comes to a place when we think we're done. And the question to all of us, why do you think you're done? Now, here's why, because we see it in this example. Why do you think that they were done? Number one, they thought they were done because of failure. The enemy uses failure to ruin your confidence. You know, when we fail, we like, I ain't doing that no more because it didn't work. So we think we're done because we fail. We do that in our relationships. We get in relationships and stuff is not going the way we want, so we think we're done. So now it's time to look for another. So we so accustomed that failure means it's done. Failure means it's finished. See, that's what we believe failure means to us. So that's why we win relationships. We are we fussing because failure means that we're going to be over. I need to be right. You need to be right. We fighting for who's going to be right because we don't want failure. Are you hearing me? But failure is what the enemy uses to ruin your confidence and to make you give up on your future. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, cast not away your what? Confidence. Why? Because it have great recompense of reward. So he's trying to get you not to get your reward. He's trying to stop you from walking in your future because of what? Failure. Think of all the things that we quit because of failure. Well, I can't seem, I'm not good in that subject in school because I failed at it. So you don't even continue in that subject because you failed in that subject. Oh, I'm not good at math. Why? Because you failed at it. And so then you create a theology based on your failure. And then you become imprisoned by the thing that's prisoning you. Instead of your failure being a, a schoolmaster to teach you and to cause you to be open up to a future, you use that thing to imprison you. I'm just not good at math. You accept a theology because of failure. Are you hearing me? God, Satan wants you to focus on what did not work so you can't see what will work. Are you hearing me? Number two, they thought they were done because they dealt with frustration. How many has ever been frustrated? Two of y'all, four of y'all. Thank you. How many has ever been frustrated? Let me see your hand. Some of you are frustrated now, and you don't even realize how frustrated you are. <clears throat> you, we're, we're frustrated. They were, they were frustrated. It's frustrating when you put in time and effort, and it's unfruitful. I put all this time into this relationship. And it ain't going nowhere. It's frustrating. That's what your wives say about you. My God, he ain't never changing. <laughs> I'm frustrated with him. Because we're not changing. I serve him. I feed him. I do all of those things. And, and I'm sowing seed into his life. But I don't see a harvest of the seed I'm sowing. I'm frustrated. Do you realize that, that in our relationship, that's what's happening? They're sowing into our lives, but they're expecting a harvest. And when they don't get the harvest that they expect, there is frustration. Are you hearing me? Frustration will make you say, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out. I, I can do better by myself. I'm gone. Look, see, see. See, frustration brings you to a place where you think you are finished. 
but God says you ain't finished yet. And you don't even want to hear that. I don't want to tell God to tell me I'm, I'm not finished when I am in my mind. I'm finished. But that's what frustration do. Frustration make us do that. And then the enemy uses frustration to create, watch this, agitation. <clears throat> the enemy uses agitation to cause you to abandon what you started out to do. Did you see that? You abandon what you started because you agitated over it. Thing bothers you, gets on your nerves. We see that in the Apostle Paul's ministry in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. <clears throat> he says, and lest I should be, verse 7 in the New King James Version. He says, lest I should be exalted above measure. Lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, watch this, to buffet me. What does it mean to buffet me? It means to strike repeatedly. Strike repeatedly. He's striking me repeatedly. He's not coming to kill me. He's just coming to agitate me. Did, did you see that? So Satan is coming to strike you and I repeatedly, whether in your personal life or whether it's in your relational life, whether it's in your financial life. Have you known people that just seem like, man, they just keep getting attack after attack in their finances? He's not trying to kill you. He's just trying to agitate you, push you, get on your nerves until you get to the point and say, I'm done, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this, I'm not. Listen, this stuff doesn't work. Sowing seed doesn't work. Giving tithes and offering doesn't work. I can't pay my bills, but I paid. I gave my tithe to God, but it didn't. My bills ain't paid. I don't ever have any money. I'm, I keep been, have to be moved from one place to another place, from one place to another place, to the point I'm agitated. Is Satan, he's coming to buffet you. He said, lest I be exalted above measure. He says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Failure made them to quit. And frustration made them to quit. Need you to understand what frustrations is all about. I need for you to understand what failure is really about. I need you to understand what agitation is all about. It's all about making us quit. Number four, fatigue made them to quit. The text said, I need to read the story. Let me read some of this story. Let me, then I come back. Verse 3 of the story, it says, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. And then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. I have a great appreciation for the teaching of the word now. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep waters and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't, haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. But when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. Now, let me back up. Let me back up. 
to where we left off at. Fatigue made them want to quit. The text said they worked hard all night. Tell somebody, you're going to be tired. Didn't say they work, they work hard all night. So we're dealing with a people who is sleepy, tired, and fatigued. You know how you get when you tired. You ain't you ain't nice to hang around. You ain't nice to be with. You know when your body ain't right and you and you just you just not you not you short tempered. You shorten your words, and here they are. And see, they failed, they're frustrated, they're agitated, and now they're tired. I need to get the picture here. This is the reason that they have decided, I'm done. I'm through with this. I'm tired. But right in the middle of being tired, Jesus gives them a word. When they tired, push the boat out a little further. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I'm agitated. I'm frustrated. And you want me to push your boat out? I don't have the energy. Leave me alone. I just want to go to my man cave and cut a movie on and play with the remote. Leave me the heck alone. And right when you're at the worst of yourself, Jesus says, stop what you're doing. Well, what were they doing? They were cleaning their nets. Stop it. And push me out in your boat. Seriously? I haven't finished washing my nets. I'm frustrated. I, f I deal with failure. I'm agitated. I'm tired, sleepy. And you want to use my boat to preach? So Peter, <laughs> Peter gets in the boat and pushes out. Now watch it. Not only does he have to push out when he's tired, Jesus wants to preach. When he finished, I got to go back out there and finish cleaning my nets. Now I got to sit in a boat and listen to this man preach for I don't know how long. See, we can't take it beyond 45 minutes. And I guarantee Jesus didn't preach 45 minutes. Peter's in that boat like, oh, my God, he's a long-winded preacher at that. Peter's done. He finished. But God's not finished. And here's what you got. When you think you are finished, you don't think you have the energy. You don't think you can do it. Listen, what gives you the ability to do it is now you begin to step into obedience. When you step into obedience, you didn't have the energy when you was on the outside. But when you step into obedience, there will be the energy that you need to do what you could not do on your own. Why? Because God is a finisher and he will help you to finish. There are times when I'm just absolutely exhausted, but I got things that I got to do, and I know. But the minute I step into that obedience, his grace is sufficient for me. For in my weaknesses, I am made what? Strong. Ooh, glory to God. I'm, thank you, Jesus. I was tired. I didn't know how I was going to be able to do it. But in my obedience... He gave me the energy, the strength to do what I was too tired to do. Why? Because God is a finisher. And the finisher lives on the inside of you and I. <clears throat> Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you think about it, I was thinking about what that looks like. It's that scripture that says, and God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can what? 
ask or think. Watch this. According to what? A power that's where? In you. I'm tired, but the power on the inside of me isn't tired. This is when God starts to do exceedingly. This is when God starts to do abundantly above all that you can ask or think. But he does it in accordance to a power that's on the inside of you. Not based on your flesh. That's why when I want to quit, the power on the inside of me says it's not over until the fat lady sing. The fat lady ain't sang yet. The power on the inside of you, and she ain't sung yet. The game is still being played. What's, what turns that power on? Stepping into that obedience. Simon answered and said, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say, one translation, King James says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, this is prophetic, that their nets begin to break. God is trying to show you how to get net breaking blessings. When you let him finish what he starts. <laughs> well, glory. When you let him finish when you ain't finished. When you let him finish when you are finished. <laughs> the result of that is net breaking blessings. That's prophetic. So they signaled to their partners. Notice who they signaled to. Luke made it clear that he didn't signal to anybody. Who did he signal to? To his partners. He signaled to those that were with him when they didn't have nothing. He signaled to those that were with him when he was in failure. He signaled to those when, when he was frustrated and, and when he was agitated and when he was tired. He signaled to those that were with him when nothing was working. Ooh, glory. He signaled to those who wasn't just part of the crowd, but people who were supporting the supporters get to partake of your obedience. You know, there are people that, that will hang around, but then there's a group of people that will support. I remember when I first got started in ministry, and, I, and this is, I wasn't even the pastor. I was at a church, and we were, we were using a, a school. And so we'd have to get up early on Sunday mornings and load the truck up with carpets and and some of the people know what I'm talking about anybody know what I'm talking about you low carpets in there you low speakers and everything and you come out and you, you roll them things out on the floor and and set out everything up and then when the, when the service is over you had to break it down and put it back there are people that were standing around who sat on the front row with you but when it came time to break it down all they did was company they just was watching I call them company but then there was ones who were the supporters. They were the ones rolling up the carpet, lifting up the speakers, putting it in the van. Those were the supporters. And that's who Peter was signaling to. Not the people that were standing around being your company, but the ones that were supporters. Woo! Glory! Are you hearing me? Here's in closing, none of this would have happened if Peter had a let Jesus, had not let Jesus have the final word on when it is finished. None of this happens if Peter didn't let Jesus to have the final word on it 
is finished. None of that. Think about that. James and John's boat is full because of Peter's obedience. Are you hearing me? When you quit, you're not just quitting on you. You're quitting on somebody else as well. There are implications for your quitting beyond you. Look at your neighbor and say, quitting is beyond you. Which is why God is so invested in you finishing. Because it's beyond you. It's beyond you. Did, you. did you see that story? So they signaled to their partners in the, the other boats to come and to help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. That does not happen. If Peter does, doesn't allow God to finish what he starts. <sighs> My question to you in closing, whose boat stays empty because you allowed it? You allowed it because of your failure. You allowed it because of your frustration. You allowed it because of your agitation. And you allowed it because of your fatigue. Whose boat goes unfilled because you quit? Stand to your feet. <laughs> Who's missing God because you quit? Yeah, it is life changing. I started to preach this at the men's conference. This is a combination of what I've been going through in my own personal life that God's trying to tell me. The agitations that you and I experience, the anxiety, all of that is coming to make you quit. And when you quit, there are boats that go unfilled. Come on, let's begin to thank God for that word in this place. Glory! Glory! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Not a word. Ooh, glory, glory. How I many has ever been frustrated? How I many has ever been agitated? How I many is dealing with frustrations today? Yeah. Absolutely. I drove down here. <clears throat> I don't know if I can tell you that. Let me. I have to be careful what I say. <clears throat> Cause I I teach out of. I teach out of, the teacher teaching me in my in the experiences I'm I'm walking through. You understand. Trying to get on my own understanding, like how do I, how do I get gri grip my hand around this? I, that's one of the reasons the Lord said, "Get out of here." For the month of February, get out of here. I was fatigued. Yeah. You, 
no, you know, all the things that I'm trying to help you to understand. <clears throat> Frustrated, tired. And don't even know how to put a word to it or understand it. I've I made a commitment every year I'm getting out of here. Because I'm I'm so I'm responsible for so much stuff that you have no idea. So much stuff. Some of it is so. And I'm not even talking about our churches. I'm talking about outside of our churches. I'm away, supposed to be away, and I'm on the phone from four to five hours. Day in and day. I'm supposed to be away, but I'm on the phone. And, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around all of this. And this is going on for months and months and months. And then when I think about it, it's years. And uh, <clears throat> to the Lord, it's like, you, you, you got to get away. I need to talk to you. See, you, you get so frustrated. You get so, you, you, you failure can make you just quit. You quit on your marriage. You quit on your children. You, you quit on yourself. You stop being who you, you used to be. You stop being a person who's present. Because you quit. And you, 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 you know when a person has quit. You ever tried to counsel a person who's already quit? They come to you and their marriage is toe up, but they already quit. So you, you, how do you help that? You have more energy for that marriage than they do because they quit. And they come to you out of respect, not to keep moving forward. They come to you because they want to say, well, I did come to counseling, but they didn't come to be counseled. They already quit. And you have more energy for the success for their relationship than they have. That can wear on you because I know that God is a God who finishes. We say all the time, all things are possible to him who can believe and we quit. We just don't know Jesus as a finisher. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's begin to thank God. Thank you, Jesus. All over the building, let's just thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Tracy, you got any music you can play? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mangri hivisu, ruma mande le labo shetara ba, rike ke le labo shono no le labo ke le labo, riba no no le labo shitano riba saya, raba barika no riba shere le labo to riba ya le labo kaya, re le le labo shitaro baba le le labo kore bebe, risi le le labo soko raba shikana le labo ya ya, rike le le labo roko kore bebe shikaya le labo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is why we hear the stories of a a man leave and don't ever come back. This is why men don't take responsibility because of the failure and the the frustration and the agitation. I'm just tired. That's why we have, I believe that we have so many <clears throat> fatherless fathers. Unaccounted for. Can't find them. <clears throat> So we don't know how to respond to failure. I believe there's so many reasons we got so many divorces because we don't know how to respond to frustration. That's why we quit. I remember my son, and I took him to the football practice. And well, his mother took him because I was out of town preaching. And when I got home, she said he cried the whole time. He just cried and performed, and she refused to not allow him to quit. And then, so next week, I had to take him. <clears throat> and I sat down and I told him, I said, "Son, we're not quitters." I said, "You're going to." I understand he was under pressure. They, they'd already been practicing all summer, and he comes um, r- really late. And so this team is a very successful football team. A coach is very successful. They practice like almost like the NFL. They have an off season and everything. So he comes in so late. He's really behind. It's his first organized football. And when I bring him there, <clears throat> this is like a championship caliber team. And he doesn't want to be there. And I have to sit him down and tell him, boy, son, I love you, but I can't allow you to be a quitter. I said, here's what we'll do. I said, you give it all you got, and if you discover you don't like it, then I will allow you to quit. I said, but we're going to be here every Saturday, me and you. I'll be your greatest cheerleader. I'll be there supporting you. i hold you up. I will be cheering you no matter what happens. I want you to know I'm going to be the one for you. I said, but we're going to show up every week, and we're going to practice, and then game day, we're going to be there to play. So he does it. Works and works and works. You know he became the captain of the team. He became the captain. They won the championship in the state of Maryland. They beat the teams in Baltimore, and they went and played the teams in Virginia, the championship team in Virginia. They beat all the teams in Maryland. 
They didn't beat that team in Virginia. That team in Virginia had a bunch of Redskins sons in it. <laughs> yeah. He played four years, and then he quit. And the coach came to my house, knocked on my door, begged for him to come back. And he said to me, Dad, I'm finished. And then he started playing basketball. He made his high school team. <clears throat> but he would have never experienced any of that if I had to let him quit. They won championship after championship. He had trophies. He was the captain. He was the leader. He would have never, ever experienced any of that if he had quit. <clears throat> you don't know what you're giving up when you quit. Quit on God. Quit on yourself. Quit on your family. Quit on your school. Quit on a course that you don't think you can do. I remember when I was in college, and I'll close with this. <clears throat> they would always say that this professor was too hard to pass. He was, could make sense of him. So I, I, I took the course. I think it was a physics course. I took it in the summer, <clears throat> figuring, well, I'll try it in the summer. And it was a... An Asian man who didn't speak English well, so I couldn't understand nothing he was saying. So I dropped the course because I couldn't. What is he talking about? I don't know. And I waited almost to my uh, sophomore year, junior year, to take the course because <clears throat> in order for me to graduate, I had to have that. And here's what I did different. I just, everybody would tell me, you can't pass that class. It's too hard. It didn't, everybody fails in this class. And I believed that before I got in the class. So I did enroll in it, and the first week, I jumped out of it. But when I got to my, I think it was my junior year, I had to have it. I said before I got in, and I'm not even a believer, I'm going to pass this class, and I'm going to be an A student. I took the class. I became an A student and the tutor for the class. It's not over until he says it's over. Listen, I just want you to revisit the areas where you have says, I'm done, I'm finished. And ask God, is he finished? Is he finished? He's not finished with any one of us. And what may have looked impossible before becomes so simple now. Why? Because he's not finished. Father, I lift up the men of God today. I almost felt like having an altar call <clears throat> where you decree and declare, I am a finisher. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to do this as a prophetic act. If you, if God spoke to you in this message and you know that, man, <clears throat> what I considered finished, he considered unfinished. If I considered something unfinished, he considered it finished. If that was you this morning, I just want you to stand with me at, in this long line here. Just stand here. If you believe <clears throat> that God is your finisher. Just a long line. We're not going to pray. I just This is a prophetic act. Of, um, like Peter being obedient. It was his obedience that got him <clears throat> blessed and those people that are around you blessed. Even when people don't believe in your obedience will get them blessed. We're blessed. Now, 
if you got anything out of that this morning, I want you to put your hands together and thank God for that. And say this, I am a finisher. What I start, I finish. Thank you. It's never over until the fat lady sang. I haven't heard her singing yet. It's not over. If you're about to quit on your relationship, it's not over. That's right. That's it. That's the word. It's more. There's more. Oh, my God. Reggie, Ella, it, there's more. I could title this message, There's More. There's so much more. That's the Holy Ghost saying that out of you. You know that? That's Holy Ghost. <clears throat> you know, the Holy Ghost just said, there is more. There's so much more. Wow. I heard the Holy I, I heard your Holy Spirit. There is more. There is so much more. And we're going to go for the more. Put your hands together one more time. And <clears throat> Yeah. Would, would you all be so gracious to me? Now, I don't normally hang around on a Saturday. I love to, but I have to go home and think about Sunday. So while y'all are fellowshipping, and much as I love to do that, I have to go figure out, God, what do I do tomorrow? Will you... Um, love me enough to allow me to leave and go do that. Okay. All right. So, because I do not know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> I just know what I was called to do today. Amen. <clears throat> I love y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to remind each and every one of you of the men conference that's coming up. I want you to take off that and, and get a room down there. I want you to be a part of all the meetings. <clears throat> Satan wants us to be ignorant, uninformed, misinformed. So you will suffer where you're not supposed to suffer. And that's why Jesus taught so much in the Bible. You ever notice he taught everywhere? And I was looking at that. Okay, God, now I know why. So, <clears throat> and and <clears throat> there are, the rooms, in, they're not expensive down there. Just, you just two days. Get a room. <sighs> and make yourself available so that God that that has begun something in you, he will finish it. Elder Rod, I want him to finish what he started in me. Elder Reggie, I want him to finish it because there is more. Man, I love you guys. Thank you so much for giving me the grace to leave. I want to turn it over Elder, take it. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to our dad. As a matter of fact, can you stretch your hands towards him and just pray for God to just fill him up with the life that he's released today? Father, we just give you praise, oh God. Ah, oh, Lord, there are many pastors, but there are just very few fathers. Thank you, God, for the father you have blessed us with, oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh God, for our apostle. We thank you, O oh God, for your spirit, O oh God. 
replenishes him, O oh God, fills him up to overflowing, O oh God, that the oil will always be fresh and full in the name of Jesus. The oil will overflow over his life in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the hedge of protection around him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the ministry of angels, O oh God, executing everything that he speaks in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise, O oh God. No quit, O oh God. No anxiety in the name of Jesus. And we bless you, O oh God. For Lord, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things you've prepared for our Father, O oh God. And we give you praise for it's come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, you may be seated, gentlemen. Elder Roy. Lord, he got uh, TK. Don't go, don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere, because I want you to. But um, fellas, 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 I'm glad I came to church today. <laughs> I needed that right there. But I need. But, so you you heard this before? Exercise your faith. Now, when he was preaching that. You know, in your mind, you thought about something that you had started that you didn't finish. You thought about something. So this is what I need all of you to do. Whatever that thing is, it could be something small, it could be something big, whatever it is, but you have to just start today. See, don't, don't let this word get stolen from you. Go home, leave here today, and start this thing that you hadn't finished yet. It could be just filling out a form. It, it could be just, it could be cleaning off a corner of a desk. It could be whatever. There's something that's nagging you. I mean, when I was sitting there, I'm thinking all these things that I have not finished. But find this one thing, whatever it is, and do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till later. Do it today. Just, just get started. And then, and then say, just like we always quote, Jesus is a finisher, right? As Jesus is, so am I in this world. And you just keep saying that to yourself and saying that to yourself until you get that thing. You can check it off your list. And then you go on to the next thing. But you can't, you can't, you can't let this word get stolen by saying, ah, because I'm a procrastinator. I was. I was a procrastinator. I was a procrastinator. But now I'm a finisher. And so I have to do something today to exercise that faith. Amen. That's all I wanted for you. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't be disobedient. Do that <laughs> today. Amen. Hallelujah. So one of the things we need to finish is what? Go register for the conference. Don't, don't procrastinate. We're going to finish registering. Amen. And take time off. Make that request in faith. Now, I know some of you might say, well, my job, this, that, and the other. But I'm telling you, step out of yourself and exercise the faith to be there. Amen? Amen. Be there. You can step out of yourself. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. We have a testimony. And it's a testimony of someone who didn't quit. Um, how powerful this message was that, um, you know, our dad told us and preached to us, don't quit, don't get frustrated, and even when you do, never quit, because there's, there's more. So I want to actually bring up um, Dick and John Monroe, because he, he is a walking testimony, he's a living testimony of not quitting and the power and the healing power of God over his life, Amen. You want to come up, sir? You want me to give you the mic over there? Okay, well, praise the Lord. Now, now, he's coming up to the podium. Is a testimony. For, and I'm not trying to preach ahead of him, but just what he's doing right now, for those who may have known a couple months ago, this is a living witness. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, brothers. Um, some may not know, but I was in quite a few car accidents, which left me with four bulging discs in my back. But also, 
I didn't know when I went to the surgeon that I had three in my neck. Now the surgeon who was supposed to do the back operation died. And what he died from, I was healed from. And where, I'm gonna bring it up now. And so I had to go to another surgeon in that same practice. But I prayed about it and it took many years before I let him operate on my back. And I took pain meds for so many years, which caused another problem in my body. The surgery was excellent, because I prayed over the surgeon's hands, where God moved his hands for me. He made three entries. He took out the four bulging discs. It was a two-day surgery, four and a half hours each day, the first day. The second day, it was June 13th. The second day, June 14th, was my wedding anniversary. And when he did that, I never knew. You know, I woke up, but I didn't know what was going on because I was in another place. And on the fourth day, well, on the second day, I did wake up. Part of my body left me. My spirit left me. I went up to heaven. And I realized what they was telling me, how beautiful it is, it is. I see my great grandmother. She told me, baby, why are you here? It's not your time. And I said, no, Nana, I want to stay. She said, no, baby, you got to go back. That's when I woke up. But I still was somewhat out of it because I stayed in and out of the hospital. I stayed in the hospital a long time. My daughter fed me on my birthday day, June 27th, my birthday cake. Something that they told me that the nurses, all the nurses on that, you know, in that unit came in and sang happy birthday. Something that they would never have done before. And I praise God for his deliverance of me, bringing me back and give me the ability to be able to walk again, to teach me not to give up. So I will say to y'all, don't give up. And one day I'll tell you something else later, but not today. Amen. Tell and, us what scripture you, you stood on, sir. Well, I stood on Isaiah 58, 8. Life, you know, I'm going to paraphrase this for you. Life breaks forth like a brand new day. And also Jeremiah 30, 17, where God will heal your wounds. And I was, you know, I reached out to um, Marilyn Hickey and Sarah Hickey. And somehow they sent a lot of scriptures to me in prayers, and they prayed with me. And they gave me Ezekiel 36, 23. And when I read it, I knew I was there. And I thank God that the process is still working in me and my faith has, has built up even stronger. And the thing, what's gonna take place in me, where y'all see me walking without any device, the process is not done yet. But when it's done, I'm not finished. Because God called me to do a lot of things. And it's all going to be carried out. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Man, that testimony was a combination of everything Pastor Tony just preached about. It's not finished. It's not quitting. Right? And there's more. And there's more. Praise God. Brother Tommy. A quick, yes, sir. Hey, guys, how y'all doing? Hey, listen, when I first started my show, uh, when I was trying to get sponsors, they kind of all told me the same thing. They said, we don't invest in a new show and put advertising money because it's a new show. We don't know what we're going to do. So what, the, uh, what almost all of them told me verbatim is, let me see your first year's numbers. Bring me back your first year's numbers, and we'll go from there. So I finished the first year. Numbers were fantastic, and the sponsors came on. 
Well, the show was growing. I'm coming into my fourth year, and the show, and the, amen. And and the show was growing to the point now where I need professional help. So I had to hire some social media experts. I actually had to hire some people. So my wife and I, we were away last week. When we go away, one of the things we always do is we set aside specific things and people that we're going to pray for, like you. <laughs> and we just set aside time to pray. But when we pray, we always put a seed to sow with it. So one of the things that my wife and I prayed was we got these extra costs, the show. We hiring on people for the show. Uh, we need money for the show, but we don't want to take the money out of our pocket. We don't want to take the money out of our own bank account for this. So we prayed and we sowed a seed. And uh, last week, uh, my sponsor called me and said, listen, we've been very, very happy with the results of being with the show, and we'd like to pay you for the whole year up front. And, and, the, mo and the money from the whole year up front covered the new people that we hired, and more importantly, the new people that we hired said, we're gonna need this equipment, this equipment, and this equipment. It'll pay for all of the equipment. And it, it it's not coming out of our personal, it just came from the sponsor that was happy, said, we wanna pay you for the whole year because we're happy with what we're saying. So I just want to share that testimony with you guys. That is so good that we don't need any other offering message. No, for real, right? Because that was it right there. And, and just so you all know, that was not planned. And I didn't know how we were going to go through this. So, <laughs> so God has given us the offering message. So how many people are encouraged to give this morning? Because God is a God that doubles and multiplies. And he anticipates and makes a way where there seems to be no way. But when you sow in faith and you believe that word, then that word produces. Amen. So if you need um, an offering envelope, uh, Brother Bill is uh, walking down the aisle. You can have an offering envelope. But you know how we do this. We also um, do this electronically. So you can text 73256. And um, you can also go online to our website, bcci.org. And you can log on and uh, make your donations online. So just, just focus on and ask God, and tell God what you want as you, you, you commit to sowing this morning. Um, and just put a name to the harvest. Yeah, put a name to the harvest. Make sure you write on your envelope your name, but I'm talking about the harvest that we want. Put your name to it. Yeah, finish. <laughs> finish. Finish. You ready to give? We need a minute? Okay. I see folks say we need a minute because we're going to pray in agreement. And when we pray, it will come to pass. Man, this has been so powerful this morning, man. I am telling you, God is so good. And what God did for Brother Tommy, God is able to do for you. No respect of persons. All he just wants is faith because he says, hey, he'll do it again. He will do it again. He will do it again. We ready? All right, let's stand to our feet and let's pray. Father, we just give you thanks, oh God, for this opportunity that we have to give to your kingdom. Lord, we give because we love you. And Lord, we thank you because your word says that when we give, it is given unto us good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will men give unto our bosom. Your word says that when we bring our tithe and our offerings into the house, you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we do not have enough room to receive. We thank you, O oh God, for the grace to finish. We call forth, O oh God, finish, finish, finish in everything we lay our hands to do. And we give you praise because we are prosperous. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, gentlemen, you may be seated. We are getting to the wrap-up of our meeting. We were going to have a breakout session um, but what I think we will do is, um, but lunch is also nearly ready, so we'll just do our lunch, and we can just fellowship. Um, and as you fellowship, just, you know, 
talk over some of the things that you want to finish. You know, some of the things come into your heart, your spirit, your mind. You know, one of the things that we never underestimate is the power of the spoken word. The Bible says that the power of, of um, death and life is in the tongue. And then Pastor Bruce taught us we just don't use our tongues to communicate or to express ourselves. We use our tongues to create. So as we speak, we're creating stuff that we are going to finish. Amen? We're going to finish so many things because I just believe that God stirred us up today, man. I'm so, so pumped, so excited. Uh, yes, this is just a wonderful day. Amen. How many people are glad you came this morning? I'm um, so good. Anybody here for the first time? You've never been a part of our, of our men's meeting before, and this is first? Anybody? No? Going? Okay, looks like it's all family. So, great. So, um, you know, we've started our quarterly meetings. This is our second quarter meeting. So, our next time that we gather as men will be at VCMI Woodbridge Campus, June 5th to the 7th. Is the men's conference. It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, we start Wednesday evening, and I think it runs all the way through to Friday night. So, that's why Apostle was talking about booking your rooms, making a reservation for your room for Wednesday night and Thursday night, and then Friday will be wrapped up and we can all come back home. But please make it a date. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Amen? All right. We're about to pray and be closed. Um, Minister Colin, do you want to mention anything about our prayer schedule? And then right after that, um, Minister Federico, would you like to say anything about Linked for Purpose? Yeah, right after uh, Minister Colin. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Elder TK. Uh, just to let you know that every other Wednesday, um, prayers go forth. The mighty men of valor do recorded prayers, and they're aired at noonday, for those who, just to remind you. And there are several men here that do pray with us faithfully. And I'm asking anyone that is interested that the Lord has put on your heart that you would like to, to pray, join the prayer, Mighty Men of Valor prayer team, and get on the schedule for the second half of 2024. Please see me after. And gentlemen, let us finish. Amen. So one thing that Minister Collins said is, he said, for those of you who want to, well, I want to challenge you that we're going to be making ourselves disciples so sometimes you may not want to but we'll ask you to amen because prayer is what we all do amen all right yes sir minister federico good morning good morning brothers there is this group that was started from um the suitland church it's called links for purpose right it's a reading it's a reading um encouraging men building men ministry uh it's not about counseling it's about us getting together and reading scripture and praying together and just um you know lifting up the men and women of god so i encourage you all to um to just reach out to me you can reach out to um depot um we are all a part of this who else Minister Colin, because, um, you know, we, this was placed in our lap, and um, we want to include this church, right? We want to include the men of this church to be a part of that, because we have all the other men in other churches that are joining, and uh, we got to show up and represent, right? right? So I encourage you all to, um, you know, reach out to us. If you don't have my email, uh, you can reach out to um, Elder TK or somebody in the chat and um, just be a part of this. Thank you all. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right. So the whole point is to just stay connected, is to, to an opportunity to be discipled. So, um, you know, looking forward to you all participating in that. I think we're kind of wrapped up. Elder Reggie, do you want to say anything, sir? Praise the Lord. Elder Rod, anything else, sir? We're good? Hearts are mind and clear? Okay. All right, gentlemen, let's stand to our feet. We'll pray, and we'll pray about the food, and we can have some great lunch, fellowship, and we'll be wrapped up. Father, we just give you thanks, O oh God. Thank you for the 
word that we've heard today that has changed our lives, oh God. Ah, Lord, we are thankful for the presence of the men, oh God, who love God, who are here to just be a part of what you're doing, oh God. We are so grateful for how you've blessed us with this word. You've charged us. You've encouraged us. You've you stirred us up to finish to finish all the dreams, oh God, to finish all the things you've put on our hearts to do. Father, we thank you because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faiths. And so we go forth in the power and the anointing to finish. And we thank you for our man of God for being a blessing to us this morning. We give you praise about the food we're about to eat. We thank you it is good for our bodies, suit to our taste. And we thank you, God, for the hands that have prepared it, oh God. Thank you for the hospitality team for serving us. And we thank you for everything. Thank you for victory, oh God. And we give you praise, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.